Welcome everybody, my name is Lida Liberopoulou and on this video I'll be answering a viewer comment on Plague Tale Innocence. The comment was posted by the Tubester on uh, the second part of my Are the Plague Tale Games Historically Accurate series? and asks whether the painted patterns and gilded decorations on the bastions, arches and columns are realistic. Ah oh yes, the Bastion, uh, the base of operations for the game's main villain, Grand Inquisitor Palpa... Vitalis. Vitalis. I keep making that mistake for some reason. You get to explore the Bastion as Hugo in Chapter 14 near the end of the game. The structure itself is comprised of different types of interconnected buildings, including at least two cathedrals. Most of these buildings are designed in the medieval gothic style. What's interesting about the bastion, uh, besides the fact that its structure and uh, function doesn't make much sense, is that its uh, walls and columns are covered with decorative patterns. Not only that, there are many places where columns and arches are fully gilded. So what's unusual about that, you may ask? Wall frescoes and mosaics were pretty common in the Middle Ages, and there are at least two examples of this in the game. The first example is in the beginning, when we explore the family chapel in the Derun estate, and the second is in the small church we first enter when we get to the monastery. But the Gothic cathedrals were very different. The aim to inspire awe to the visitor through their vast open spaces and their masterful use of light. To achieve this, they used breakthroughs in technology, like the combination of pointed arches with ribbed vaults and the addition of flying buttresses as an external support. This innovation allowed cathedrals to reach incredible heights while minimizing the wall area and replacing it with large windows. As a result, almost every part of their interior was flooded by sunlight. The main decoration of the Gothic cathedral was the stained glass windows themselves. With their bright colors and depictions of religious scenes, they aimed to beautify the building's interior and educate the visitors about the Bible and the lives of the saints, since most of them couldn't read. The walls were almost always plain white stone. There can be some sculptures occasionally, but even those tend to be simple and do not have any additional color. This was intentionally designed so that the walls would reflect the light and make the space as bright as possible. Although that was almost universally the rule, there were some notable exceptions like uh, the Albi Cathedral in the south of France or the St. Mary's Basilica in Krakow. But in the Bastion's case, I think that the game designers were inspired by the Saint-Chapelle, the private chapel of the King of France in Paris. This is arguably the most heavily decorated Gothic church out there. Almost every square centimeter of the chapel is covered by paintings or carvings, and the arches and columns are gilded. Also, both its columns and walls are full of repetitive motives and patterns. In fact, in the game, the symbol of the Inquisition is used as a decoration in the same way as the royal symbols of the castle and the lily are used in Saint-Chapelle. So the short answer is yes, kinda. When it comes to the cathedral areas of the bastion, the wall patterns and gilded arches are based on designs that did exist at that time. But I would say that seeing these designs on other parts of the structure is unrealistic to say the least. In later centuries, there were some pretty heavily decorated libraries and public offices, especially in the Baroque era, but uh, this is the Middle Ages. The Saint-Chapelle was this elaborate because it was the private chapel of the French royal family and the place where Christ's crown of thorns was kept. The Bastion's decorations can work for the cathedral areas, but as powerful as Vitalis is supposed to be, he's not rich to the point where he can afford gilded columns in his industrial alchemy lab. I think that the game designers kind of missed the mark there. That's about it. If you think that this type of video is interesting and you want to see more like it, please leave a comment here or in one of my History in Video Games videos. I will try to answer it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and uh, Ave Atque Valais.